something else was said earlier about freedom to move forward. And then we were talking about purpose. And I said, well, what is purpose? Well, I looked it up in the dictionary, and it says the reason for which something is done or created for which it exists. And as I was sitting here reading that, I couldn't help but think that we all have a specific plan and purpose. God created each and every one of us specifically for his purpose. So if you're sitting around and you're bummed out, depressed, you're thinking you're abandoned, forsaken, alone, uh, the world has turned its back on you, uh, hey, let the world go and cling to the Father. Because the Bible says if you draw near to him, he will draw near to you. And you were created for a purpose. The reason for which you exist and were created is to glorify the Father. That's no small fact. That's no small thing. When we really think about it, we're talking about glorifying and being used and trusted and appointed by the very one who created the heavens and the earth. That's a big deal. I don't know about you, but hey... Uh, I work at a gym part-time, and, you know, uh, I see people excited just to become the team leader. I mean, just the team leader. Well, praise God, you know. This here is greater than a team leader. This is greater than the CEO. This is glorifying the Father. So it doesn't matter uh, what you've done in your past life. The only thing that matters today is that you repent. Turn from your wicked ways, cry out to the Lord, and start fulfilling your purpose, your destiny mm -hmm. in Christ Jesus. Now, listen to this, for which something is done or created, for which it exists. The Father, look at Jesus Christ. Yeah. He was created and existed for one reason. So you could be restored into a right relationship with the Father. You see, it's always been about you. Mm. When we look at the Father and we think about it, and when we read the Word of God... Everything points to Christ in the Bible. And what that means is, is that God had a plan from the beginning so that you could be restored into a right relationship and fellowship with him. Wow. Because he wants you to fulfill your purpose, your destiny, your calling in Christ Jesus. It's the reason you exist. You were created in his image and his likeness. The Father's love is unending. Uh, his mercies are new every day. And... It, Man, listen to what he says here in Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. So the Father God is telling us right there in his word that he has plans. He's already got things mapped out for you. Now, you have free will, so you can go to the left when you should go right. But it's with his loving kindness that he draws us back into him. Mm -hmm. The Father is there for us. He never leaves us or forsakes us. He never turns his back on us. You're not rejected. You're accepted in the beloved. You're loved so much that Jesus Christ died on the cross for you. And the Bible tells us that, hey, scarcely for a good man will someone give their life for him. But yet Christ died for us while we were yet sinners, and that means you. The individual listening to this, watching online, hey, pick up the phone and give us a call. Let us pray for you. The number is 513-961-8900. It doesn't matter what state you're in, what country you're in. We got, hey, reach out and call. Let us pray for you and understand that God has a plan and a purpose just for you. And your eye hath not seen, nor has your ear heard, nor can it even begin to enter into the heart the things that he has prepared for you. But you've got to put your hand to the plow. And you can't look back because if you look back, you're not fit for the kingdom of God. And what that means is this. There's nothing worth looking back for. And I know I get a little excited here. And, man, I get on a roll. I start going. And why do I start going? Because I'm talking about the love of God. And I can't help but think about the horrible pit miry clay that he picked me up out of. Yeah. I cried unto the Lord. He inclined his ear unto mm -hmm. me. The word inclined means that he leaned down. That's powerful. That is. He leaned down to hear what me, mm -hmm. Brother Josh, mm -hmm. a sinner saved by grace, unconditional love and favor, had to say. And believe me, I had to say a lot. And a lot of it sounded things like, Lord, just help me. Mm -hmm. I don't want to live anymore. I'm broken. I'm desperate. I'm abandoned, I'm forsaken. Why me, Lord? But you know what? Why not? Mm -hmm. 
Why not? We comfort others with the same comfort we've been comforted with. And each time I went through the trials and tribulations, it was going through a refining process because God has a purpose for me. It's the reason in which I exist, the period. You exist specifically to glorify and praise the Father. Listen to what Luke 4.18 says, and these words came from Jesus. It says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Now, this is Jesus talking. That's powerful right there. Jesus is telling us this. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim the good news. In other words, he had poured out his Spirit upon him so he could proclaim the good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim or announce freedom, deliverance for the prisoner, and recovering of sight to the blind. And listen to this, to set the oppressed free. So it doesn't matter where you're at right now. Today, it's not too late. Are you oppressed? Are you held captive by the wages of sin? Do you not know which way to turn? Are you broken? Does your soul need to be restored? Well, guess what? This is what Jesus specifically did on the cross for us. He was created just so he could become the perfect sacrifice. Mm -hmm. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And it was the Word that was sent forth to heal his people. He healed and delivered them. Remember that Jesus has always been with the Father. They're two in the one. And then you got the Holy Spirit. So you got three in one. We got to think about it like, hey, uh, water. You, you boil it, it turns to steam. You freeze it, it turns to ice. But yet it's three elements in one. It's still water. So we got God the Father, God the Son, and then the Holy Spirit, which he sealed us with until the day of redemption. So that what? We can be more than conquerors. We can declare out of the abundance of our heart, we know that our mouth speaks that we are more than conquerors, that we are overcomers, that we have been set free, that God has a perfect plan and a purpose specifically for you. Not the person next to you, but for you. Now, yes, of course, it's for the person all around you, for God sent his only begotten son to die on the cross for the sins of the world, but this is a personal message. This is personal. What I mean by personal is it applies specifically to you. The Father loves you. So this is the year of the Lord's favor upon your life. And what you're going to do is you're going to cry out to the Lord. And he's going to restore your soul. You're going to let go of all that stuff that you've been packed in and holding on to. You're going to let go of all that depression, all that heaviness, all those suicidal thoughts. You're going to let go of all that hate and anger. And you're going to cry out to the Father because the wages of sin is death and no good thing comes from holding on to those things. And we understand this, that, that right here the Bible says that we should present our bodies as a living sacrifice. And then we are to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. What's it mean to be present our bodies as a living sacrifice? It means to be offer up our lives to glorify the Father. Most sacrifices are dead, but God don't want a dead sacrifice. He wants you because you're full of life. You've got your whole life ahead of you. Your future's wide open. The question is, is, hey, you've got free will. Are you going to hide his word in your heart? Are you going to receive what's saying today? Are you going to cry out to the Lord? And it might just be, hey, I'm sick. Hey, I've got mental illness. Hey, I've got cataracts. Hey, I've been going to church my whole life and, you know, uh, I've been crying out to the Lord, but I'm not getting healed. I've been struggling with fornication or adultery. I've been crying out to the Lord, but I can't seem to shake it. Well, today is your day. Today is your day. You're going to repent. You're going to let go of these things. And you're going to draw near to the Father. Because again, like I said, the Father's got a specific plan and purpose for you. You're going to let go of all that hurt and all that rejection that's been pressing you into that life of sin. It's been manipulating your mind and, and trying to dominate and control your thoughts and actions. It gives you an escape for what you'd coin to be sometimes a miserable existence of a life. But your life isn't miserable you see, God is going to work all this together for your good. Why? Because you love him and you have been called according to his purpose. 
How do we know this? Well, because Jeremiah 29, 11 says it's right here. For I know the plans that I have for you. And if you go back, I think it's Jeremiah 1, 5, before I formed thee in the belly of the womb, I knew thee. Now that word knew implies that he had a relationship with you. Before you were formed. Before we were formed. Mm -hmm. You see, this is all part of God's perfect plan. Now, that doesn't mean that, hey, this fallen, sinful world is part of his perfect plan. On the contrary, everything was created to worship him. Mm -hmm. But because we have free will, God draws us with his loving kindness. He wants us to cry out to him. And sometimes, unfortunately, it's only when we're in that broken state, when our souls are crushed, when we're desperate, when we're sick, when we're backed into the corner, that we cry out to the Father. The Father loves you. He loves you. He wants you to reach out right now for a prayer. He does. He's, he's tugging on your heart. The Bible says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man would uh, open the door, I will come in and sup with him. The Father wants you to open the door uh, right now. And he wants to come in. And he wants to sup with you. What that means is he wants to have a relationship with you. He wants to dwell within you. He wants to seal you with the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. of promise. He wants to help you become that overcomer, that conqueror. He wants to supply your every need according to his riches and glory. You see, your eye have not seen, and nor can you even begin to understand what God has in plan for you. Stop living your life off sense knowledge. And start living it off what the Bible says. And it's okay if you say, well, Brother Josh, I don't know what the Bible says. Hey, the Bible says to come just as you are, broken, abandoned, neglected, hurt, and forsaken. You're a perfect candidate. Hey, the Father's going to pass up over that guy that's got 8 out of 10 stars. And he's going for that one star. If you've got negative stars, hey, man, he's coming for you swiftly. He's coming for you quickly. Why? Because you're perfect to glorify his name. Because you will truly exhibit the love of Christ. Because to whom much is forgiven, loves much. And you see, the Father loves you. He's got his eye on you. I think about that song, his eyes on the sparrow. The Father loves you. He's got a plan and purpose for you. I want to pray for you. And uh, before I do, I just want to go ahead and keep sharing with you that whoever's listening, whatever you've got going on, maybe you're having nightmares. Maybe you're having bad dreams. Maybe you've got fibromyalgia. Maybe you're filled with self-rejection and self-hate. The Father wants to heal you right now. He wants to open the eyes of your heart that you may see him. So let me just take a deep breath here and let me pray for you. Okay, let's go ahead and pray right now. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I'm praying for everybody listening right now. The person that's listening right now, Lord, this is a personalized prayer because it's specifically for them. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just remit all the sins and iniquities of our forefathers in every preceding generation. We believe that you died on the cross for our sins and was raised victoriously over sin, death, hell, and the grave on the third day. And I'm inviting you into my heart. You are my Lord and Savior. Fill me with your spirit and immerse me in your love. Right now, in the name of Jesus, we just charge any spirits of self-rejection and self-hate any fibromyalgia right now we can command healing over that body any sickness and disease any infirmities any curses we renounce and break them off right now back a thousand generations in the mighty name of jesus right now in jesus mighty name we pray for all those listening we command healing over the eyes we command healing over the soul we command all that hurt to come out of the soul right now just let your tears flow and cry out to the lord just let them go. Just let them go. Let your family go. Give your problems to the Lord. Lay it at the foot of the cross. He's your Lord and Savior. He's your everything now. It's with His loving kindness that He's drawn you. 
Right now, in Jesus' mighty name, Lord, we just receive these things. We thank you for your healing. We thank you for your deliverance. We thank you, Father God, that you will not abandon us or forsake us. We thank you, Lord, for finishing the good work in which you have started. Lord Jesus, we just want more of you. Now, if you've prayed that prayer, reach out, call us, 513-961-8900, and let us know that you've accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Let us know what he's done for you. Testify of the glorious goodness of his love and his mercy. In Jesus' name, I want to thank you today. Thank you, Lord. Every spirit's come out right now. Every spirit's come out right now. Come on, Come on.